Hello friends, uh, today I will discuss about bus bar protection for two bus system. That is uh, main bus 1 and main bus 2 are the two bus and this two bus is connected via bus coupler breaker. So in this video, I will discuss about bus bar protection for uh, two main bus system which is coupled via bus coupler breaker. So in this figure, uh, substation B has uh, two main bus, that is main bus 1 and main bus 2 is connected via bus coupler breaker. And substation B is connected via substation A via one double circuit line. So one circuit is connected to the main bus 1 and another circuit is connected to the main bus 2 end. Again, substation B and substation C is connected by one double circuit line and one circuit is connected to the main bus 1 of the substation B end and another circuit is connected to the main bus 2 of the substation B end. Again, substation C to substation D, there exists one single circuit uh, line and substation D is connected by a source. And substation A is connected by a source that is just generator. Mm, uh, now, uh, consider that a fault is occurred at point F that is at main bus 1 section. Okay. Again, uh, substation B ha has a load uh, which is connected by transformer 1 and 2. And transformer 1 and 2 is connected uh, to the main bus 1 and main bus 2 respectively. So, due to fault at point F, uh, due to absence of this bus bar protection at substation B end. So consider that uh, there exists uh, no bus bar protection at substation B end. So what will happen? Uh, since there is no bus bar protection, this 21 relay, that is 21 relay at the local end of the feeder will uh, sense this fault at zone 4 location. Okay. And remote end uh, uh, feeder will sense this fault at zone 2 location. And zone 2 is normally given as uh, time delay of uh, 350 to 500 millisecond. So this fault will be clear from the remote end feeder at zone 2 time. And all the feeder which is connected to the substation, that is this feeder, this feeder, and this feeder, and this feeder, will trip from the remote end substation uh, under zone 2 time. Okay. So fault occur at min bus 1. Uh, so if this section is out, then fault will be cleared. But due to absence of the bus bar protection, all the uh, feeder which is connected to the substation main bus 1 and main bus 2 will be tripped from uh, zone 2. And due to this, uh, there is unnecessary outage of the healthy feeder, that is, uh, feeder, this feeder, this feeder, and outage of the transformer 2 will be occur due to absence of uh, bus bar protection and substation B end. Okay. So, the first uh, uh, disadvantage of uh, absence of the bus bar protection is a fault will be cleared under zone 2 time, which is 350 to 500 millisecond time delay. And there will be a catastrophic uh, damage may occur under BOSH uh, if the fault current is huge. Again, uh, there is an unnecessary outage of the healthy line in the absence of the bus bar protection. So, in this figure, uh, one incomer uh, and one outgoing feeder is connected to the uh, one bus that is main bus 1 and main bus 2 respectively. Okay. So, incomer 1 is connected uh, to the main bus 1 and outgoing feeder 1 is connected to the main bus 1. And similarly, incomer 2 and outgoing feeder 2 is connected to the main bus 2. And uh, uh, there is the bus coupler breaker. Via this bus coupler breaker, this two bus is coupled. Okay. So, this are the CT which is connected to the both end of the bus coupler breaker. So these are the CT for the incomer 1, outgoing 1, incomer 2, and outgoing 2. Uh, now here, uh, the P1, uh, P1 of the all the CTs are connected towards the bus side, and P2 is connected for incomer and outgoing feeder is towards the line side, okay? And for the bus coupler CT, P2 is connected towards the bus coupler breaker. So the CT sorting arrangement, uh, that is S1, S1 is uh, sorted here and S2 terminal is taken to the bus bar relay. So since uh, it is the protective object is the bus bar or 
min bus 1 and min bus 2 respectively. So CT sorting is done towards the protective object which is uh, the bus and S1 that is why S1 is sorted. So there are exist uh, two zone uh, which is cover min bus 1 and min bus 2 for both end of the bus coupler breaker. Uh, now there exist uh, two zone that is zone 1 or zone A is covered uh, the, the min bus 1 section and zone 2 or zone B is covered by a uh, min bus 2 section. So if fault occur at min bus 1 that is detected under zone 1 or zone A location and the, that will trip all the breaker which is connected to the min bus 1 section that is this breaker, this breaker and bus coupler breaker and thereby it will isolate the faulty section. Similarly, fault occur at main bus 2 that is detected under zone 2 location or zone B location and it will uh, lead to tripping of the breaker which is connected to the main bus 2. So this breaker, this breaker and bus coupler breaker will trip and thereby it will isolate the faulty section. Now consider under normal load condition, outgoing feeder 1 and outgoing feeder 2 has a load current of 300 ampere each. And incomer 1 and 2 is supplied with current uh, 200 ampere and 400 ampere respectively. Since outgoing feeder 1 has a load capacity of 300 ampere and incomer 1 has a uh, supplied current uh, of 200 ampere, so remaining 100 ampere is supplied by incomer 2 via bus coupler. So, under normal condition, uh, that is zone 1. Uh, zone 1 differential current is the sum of the uh, CT which is connected uh, to the zone 1 location. Okay. So, the sum of the current uh, that is the incomer 1 current, outgoing feeder 1 current and this uh, bus coupler CT current is the zone 1 differential current. Okay. So, under uh, normal load condition, here 100 ampere current is flow from the bus coupler CT from P2 to P1 and from incomer 1 200 ampere current is flowing from p2 to p1 and the load current uh, is the for outgoing feeder is 300 ampere which is flowing from p1 to p2 so you can see since the 200 ampere plus 100 ampere which is flowing to, towards the bus from p2 to p1 okay and s1 of all the terminal is sorted so uh, 300 ampere is current is flowing from the industry C secondary side from S1 to S2 direction. Okay. Again from the uh, outgoing feeder 1, 300 ampere is current flowing from P1 to PT direction. So here the direction of the current will be from S2 to S1. So since uh, the direction of the current uh, of uh, sum of uh, income R1 and bus coupler CT is exactly opposite of that of the direction of the current of the outgoing feeder one. So under normal load condition, zone one differential current is zero. Similarly, for the zone two location or zone B location, uh, the load current uh, which is flowing for outgoing feeder two is uh, 300 ampere from P1 to P2 direction. And 100 ampere is flowing from P1 to P2 direction. Okay. So you can see that 400 ampere is current flowing from P1 to P2 direction for zone 2 location, and for incomer, 400 ampere is current is flowing from P2 to P1 direction towards the bus. So again, uh, uh, the sum of the current uh, which is uh, flowing from the uh, main bus 2 section as per the KCL is again 0. And that is why under normal load condition, the zone 2 or zone B differential current is 0. Uh, now consider that bus fault occur at point F at main bus 1 and fault current is 6000 ampere. And uh, consider that incomer 1 and incomer 2 supplied this fault current uh, respectively 1500 ampere and 2500 ampere. And outgoing feeder 1 and outgoing feeder 2 uh, will supply 1000 ampere respectively each. Okay. So, 
1500 plus 2500 that, that is 4000 and uh, this is 1000 and 1000 so this 1000 current will go via bus coupler uh, breaker and bus coupler ct to the main bus one so that is 6000 ampere is supplied from incomer one to outgoing feeder one and outgoing feeder two okay so under this condition uh, the zone one differential current so for the feeder one 1000 ampere current is flowing from p2 to p1 direction and for incomer one 1500 ampere current is flowing from p2 to p1 direction and for this bus coupler ct again 3500 ampere that is 2500 ampere plus 1000 ampere that is 3500 ampere is current flowing from p2 to p1 towards the faulty I main bus one section so all the current uh, direction is same uh, that is why i differential a that is the for zone 1 or zone A, differential current is the sum of the all the current which is connected towards the main bus 1, that is 6000 ampere. So it will uh, send a trip signal to the all the breaker which is connected to the main bus 1 section so that it will isolate the faulty section from the substation. Okay, so this breaker, this breaker, and this breaker will trip and thereby it will isolate the faulty section. Again, for zone 2 or zone B, for zone 2, for outgoing feeder 2, uh, 1000 ampere is flowing from P2 to P1 direction, and 2500 ampere current for incomer 2 is flowing from P2 to P1 direction. So, total 2500 plus 1000, that is 3500 ampere current flowing from P2 to P1 direction towards the main bus 2. Again, uh, the current which is uh, outgoing from main bus 2 towards the main bus 1 that is 3500 ampere is current is outgoing from main bus 2 from p1 to p2 direction so direction of this current is exactly opposite to that of the sum of the uh, this current and this current that, that is why the zone 2 or zone b differential current is zero so it will remain under stable condition now consider that uh, fault occur at main bus 2 section and again uh, fault current is 6000 ampere so fault current is supplied uh, the same current by incomer 1 incomer 2 outgoing feeder uh, 1 and feeder 2 that is 1500 ampere from incomer 1 2500 ampere from incomer 2 and 1000 ampere each from outgoing feeder 1 feeder 2 respectively and uh, total fault current is 6000 ampere so 2500 plus 1000 plus the remaining uh, no, 2500 is supplied from the main bus one by bus coupler ct towards the main bus two at faulty section okay so for the zone two or zone b uh, the sum of the all the current or differential current is sum up of the all the current uh, of the ct for outgoing feeder to the 1000 ampere is current flowing from p2 to p1 direction towards the main bus 2 and 2500 ampere current is flowing from p2 to p1 direction towards the main bus 2 section and 2500 ampere current is flowing from p2 to p1 direction so all the current is flowing towards the main bus 2 section and direction of the current is from p2 to p1 so all the current will be additive in nature so here the differential current is 6000 ampere and which will uh, lead the tripping of the all the breaker which is connected to the main bus 2 section and thereby which will isolate the main bus 2 or party section again uh, this condition uh, the zone 1 or zone a differential current is zero as uh, 1000 ampere for feeder 1 is uh, flowing from p2 to p1 direction and 1500 current is flowing from for incomer 1 from p2 to p1 direction and 2005 ampere uh, current is flowing from p1 to p2 direction from main bus 1 to towards the main bus 2 section since uh, the sum of the this two current is exactly opposite from on that 
for bus coupler CT and that is why the differential current uh, for the zone A or zone 1 section is 0. So it will remain under stable condition. So under this configuration of uh, zone 1 and zone 2 there is a loophole that is if fault occur in between each of the any of the bus coupler CT and bus coupler breaker. Now consider that fault occur at point F between bus coupler CT and uh, the bus coupler CT which is connected towards the main bus one side. Okay. So fault current is 6000 ampere and supply uh, of the fault current from in comma 1 and in comma 2 is 1500 ampere and 2500 ampere respectively. And each of the feeder uh, will supply 1000 ampere from the fault towards the fault current uh, via main bus 1 and main bus 2. Okay. So for the main bus 1 section, uh, for zone 1 or, or zone A location, uh, the outgoing feeder will supply fault current of 1000 ampere and direction of the current is from P2 to P1. And for incomer 1, the direction of the current for 1500 ampere is from P2 to P1 direction towards the main bus 1 side. And for this bus coupler CT, uh, sum of 2500 ampere will flow towards the fault point, uh, fault point uh, from P1 to P2 direction. So you can see that uh, uh, 2500 ampere uh, which is supplied from the bus coupler CT is from P1 to P2 direction which is exactly opposite uh, for the sum of this two CT current that is from P2 to P1 direction and that is why zone 1 or zone A section differential current is 0. Again for the main bus 2 section 1000 ampere current is flowing from P2 to P1 direction and 2500 current is flowing from P2 to P1 direction. So sum of uh, these two current that is 3500 ampere current is flowing from P2 to P1 direction towards the main bus 2. An outgoing current is 3500 ampere which is flowing from P1 to P2 direction. So again, sum of the all this current uh, for main bus 2 section is 0. So under this configuration uh, of 2 zone, if fault occur, if any of the CT, bus coupler CT and breaker, this will remain as a through fault uh, for this 2 location. So friends, uh, in the next section, uh, I will discuss about what is the proper connection of the bus coupler CT or zone A and zone 2 bus location. So in the next video, I will discuss about uh, how the bus coupler CT which is connected towards the main bus 2 will be added to the uh, zone A location. And again, uh, the bus coupler CT which is connected to the main bus 1 section will be added towards the zone 2 or zone B location. That is the overlapping of the zone is done in order to detect the fault in between bus coupler CT, any of the uh, bus coupler CT and the bus coupler breaker. So in the next video, I will discuss about this overlapping of the zone and also I will discuss about the important of the check zone differential current. So friends, if you like my video, then uh, go through my channel and do subscribe my channel and also press bell button for notification of videos to be uploaded in future. Thank you for watching this video.